we are going to do, I don't know, this could be a one or two part or three part series. And uh, it's not going to be as exciting as the other videos, but this is going to be on human sticking hands and how to properly do it, uh, common mistakes and so forth. Uh, first of all, uh, a lot of times uh, when we do single stick hands, oftentimes people think that they need a partner to start developing how to do single stick hands. It's true, just to develop the feel, you need a partner. But uh, I'm going to have Robert here demonstrate just basic motion of Todd and Bob. And this is something, to go up and Todd and Bob. Um, this is something that you can do on your own, uh, and you need to do it on your own. Your main job when you're doing single stick hands is to control your own motion. And if you can't do this motion by yourself, then when you work with a partner, it just makes it that much more difficult. So one of the things that you're looking for when you do this practice of tan bong is basically place the bong stop that you have here. If you have it too high, which is often the common mistake, you're going to feel the strain in the shoulder. There's not that much strain here in the shoulder. The, the general rule of thumb is here. Just have the wrist in the center line. The wrist should fall into the center line. The elbow should be the highest point, and also the shoulder should be relaxed. Oftentimes you have the shoulder hiked up like this, which is common for beginners. Okay, now keep continuing the motion. Down, up, down. It's a very simple motion here, but it takes time to actually develop this. Now, let me talk about common mistakes that you have when you're practicing this technique. First of all, when you go up, when he does bar top. The worst thing that you can do is it looks like the bar top, the elbow is popping up. But in actuality, the last motion is not the elbow popping up, but it's actually drilling down. If you can see that, let me show this side. When I go up like this, the elbow's last motion is not up. The elbow's last motion should be drilling down, so the motion ends up drilling down. Okay? That's one of the most common problems that you have with bar top. The finishing motion of the bar, of the elbow placement. The second thing is also the shoulder. In time, if you notice, when you develop the punch, if you punch correctly, look at my shoulder. My shoulder actually sinks in and relaxes. Okay, sinks in. It doesn't raise up when I do the punch. Same thing with bar saw. I don't do the bar saw and shoot it up. It's the same motion and concept that uh, derives from the elbow. When you do the punch, elbow pushes, sh shoulder sinks, and then you shoot the bottom. It's not raised up like this. So those are probably the two common mistakes that you see when you when you practice this. Now I'm going to do uh, more the top saw. Hands down. A lot of times, most people's problem is this. It doesn't drop. The elbow should sink naturally. Now, don't force the hands down in. I know a lot of people think force it in is the way to, to cover the line. It's, it's a very simple concept. It's, it's not rocket science here. Here's your triangle. Here, here, here you are forming a triangle formation here. Whether it's bottom, tom, jump style, whatever. If you do hands down here, the middle finger covers the center line that you have right underneath your nose. The elbow is naturally sucked in and covering this area here. Notice I still have that formation from this point here. Once you put the elbow all the way in, you only cover this line, this whole side is totally exposed up. You don't want to do it that way. Here is the natural way, just naturally sunk in, and then, then cover it, and then you have the middle finger in the center line, and that's the right way to do the hands out. Okay? Just think, if you feel any kind of tension from the bottom side of the hands out when you're doing the roll motion, you're going to be... Uh, any tension leads to worse feel. The motion has to be structurally sound in order for you to feel the technique that's coming into you. So, let's, uh, which way do This way Alright, from here we're going to show, we're going to show basic single sticky hands. Okay, first rule of thumb. When you're developing sticky hands, it's a drill. D-R-I-L-L. -L. For some reason, people still can't understand. Drills are used to develop your techniques, okay? First, you're rolling tan and bar, tan and bar. Okay. First rule of thumb is this: when you're doing this basic drill of rolling, there's no, it's not sparring. You're not trying to hit each other. If you're trying to do the basic attack where you, you do a palm, he jets and he punches up to do, and I do bottom top. My goal is not this. I'm not here and go, oh, I hit him. Oh my God, I rock. Because what you then develop is if you start doing that technique, like say Robert's here, and he starts doing a technique and just using speed to try to hit me, and I go like this. Let's say we're rolling and he tries to hit me. And then next thing you know, you're developing this jerky motion. Now you're afraid to, look, to get hit. Now you're afraid to do a block properly. And you're missing the whole point of developing a drill. You should be, when you're rolling, in a general range to reach the individual to touch him. But the point has nothing to do with you actually hitting the individual. So, first of all, 
That's the first thing to remember. When I'm moving a tan bar now, okay? I go tan bar. Common mistake is this whole concept of forward energy, okay? For example, I'm here, forward, forward, forward. You gotta drill the technique, you gotta drill the technique. Okay, let's, let's clear up this whole concept of, uh, as far as forward energy. If I put my hand here and Robert has this forward energy, the whole concept is, well, he's got that forward energy. If he, if he holds just the right amount of tension, as soon as you remove your hand, boom, he springs forward, okay? This is the answer, he springs forward, boom. Oh, well, that's Wing Chun. As soon as the force uh, leaves, the, leaves the path, the hand naturally explodes. If that was true, if that's the case, where you're doing the role and the forward energy is based off the individual, your opponent's force, and I go like this, he's not controlling his technique. I'm controlling his technique. In other words, if he's pressing against my wall, imagine here's a chair. Robert uh, puts his hand on the chair right here. Okay, here's a chair. And he's leaning on that chair. If he's leaning all on that chair and I pull the chair away, yeah, he, he moves forward in that direction of the chair, but he's not controlling his technique. He wants it to be the point where he controls the technique right here. And once the pressure leaves, he can feel that. Now, whether he chooses to stay in guard his area or spring forward, that's up to him. But it's not totally based on him just as soon as the pressure's gone, boom, he just explodes forward like that. That's not you controlling your own technique. Okay? So, right now, let's look at the role first. Okay? Sorry, jumping up and down um, from concepts. I got uh, so many things I want to show you here. Alright, basic roll, down, up, down, up. Then it looks like that's all I'm doing. Now, when I start from this position here, Tanzan or go to Bangsa, the initial roll when you first start touching, don't just go up and down. But, wow, look, we're rolling. This is Wing Chun, okay? Anyone can copy Wing Chun. That doesn't mean anyone's doing actually Wing Chun in the right way. When we touch initially from Tan and Hoops out here, imagine the amount of pressure that we're touching at this particular point. Let's give it a, a, a number so you can conceptualize it. Let's say this is two pounds of pressure that we have at this point. Two pounds to touch and two, two pounds to maintain. In other words, if I just push a little, he can match it and hold that position. Now, for example, if he keeps pushing the technique forward, two, three, four, and then he's sliding across my arm, that's no good either. That means you want to be at a point where you actually have, you neutralize each other's force. If looking at it from a triangle's perspective, it should be clear that my time out is aimed towards his center line. So in other words, he leaves this point, boom, I can immediately go into his center line. If I hold this position here, I leave this point, boom, he can immediately go into the center line. Covering the triangle line doesn't mean that you don't cover the clear line of shot, okay? In other words, I'm, other than the fact that we're touching it, we both have a line of shot to shoot at each other. You want to learn for someone to shoot and then you actually block it. For example, if a lot of times people try to cover the hoop style so much down the center line where if you can see it, if you can see it, my tanda is pushed off all the way to the edge because he's pushing the poop style so heavily into the center line. Well, the, the reasoning behind this, well, if I cover this line, then basically by the time he shoots, he's already going to block it. Okay, let's think basic logic here. If my gun is aimed at him right now, I'm going to shoot. If my gun is aimed off to the center, why the heck would I shoot? Okay, same thing in, in, in here. If my, my tanda is pushed all the way to the side, why would I even shoot to attempt a punch? There's no target there. My tanda is here. His, his, his style is here. If he wants to shoot, I let him shoot, I can block it. If I want to shoot, I can still shoot, he blocks it. So that's what you have to understand. The lines are still there open to each other. You're not blocking off the lines so that someone will take a ridiculous shot which he won't do in the first place. Okay, going back to the pressure that we're talking about. Two pounds, two pounds, okay? I have to match the amount of force that he's actually dealing with. So, if he goes five pounds, then I actually match the five pounds there. So, you feel the five pounds. Now, when we move, you can't maintain the same amount of pressure. That would be like you standing. If I'm standing, it takes me ten pounds to hold this level as far as keeping myself steady. If I want to walk, on the other hand, I actually have to release some pressure in order for one foot to lift from one side to another. Same thing, if I want to go from Tanza to Bangsa, I don't stay at the five pounds of pressure that I match here. I got to at least release a little amount of it, say four, go to four pounds, and then come back to whatever amount, back to five pounds right now, in order to get to the next level, from one point to another. What you don't want to do is, when you're rolling like this, you don't want to feel gas. In other words, here you feel this touch, 
then you feel a gap, and then you feel this connection here, back and forth, gap, gap, and then you reconnect. You want to have enough where you feel the touch, you still feel the touch, and then you can still uh, create your structure and finish off your motion from one point to another. All right, so that's the thing. Be careful from over pushing the technique and putting so much pressure and just forward energy. That's not the case. Forward energy is based off of natural low motion. If I go like this already, and this is something that you can't see on video, you can already feel the forward pressure on it. I don't have to go like this and put more forward pressure into this. If you do that by pushing more forward pressure into the individual, you're basically sticking to that individual. It's hard for you to leave the point. Okay? Uh, how much time have we used? Okay. Oh, like I said, this could be a long video. All right. <laughs> okay, so we're rolling basically once again. Tan, bong, tan, bong. Do not get caught up in the roll. If you get caught up in the roll, it's here. Oh, well, our teacher said let's roll. Yeah, um, if, you, if you roll like that, I guarantee you, five, ten years later, you'll still suck at Wing Chun. You've got to be aware of exactly what you're doing. You have to be aware as far as not only the amount of pressure that you're putting on each individual hand and your individual own structure, but you also have to be aware of whether or not you're, you're following the person or control, holding your own structure. What does that mean, holding your own structure? If I'm rolling like this, see, we're both aiming at the center line. But let's say I dictate the roll a little more, okay? Notice Robert was following me to a certain point. Now all of a sudden, I just decided, boom. I want to move his, his, his line just for the sake of it to the side. Notice how his technique just went off the center line here and went over to the other side. What does that mean? That's chasing hands, okay? If he actually had uh, the awareness of controlling that technique, he would know exactly where to aim it at his center and cover and aim it at my center as well. So by the time I start to turn it here, he actually covers that area and doesn't chase me off to the side. Okay, a lot of times you see that in, in, in videos where they're doing sticky hands. You see someone where they're just moving their hands like this and then top, moving their hands off to the center like that. If you know how to hold your structure, if, if I go like this, boom, and, I, it, and Robert holds it at this point right here, he won't cover this area like this. If he knows how to hold the structure, by the time I move it this way, he can actually neutralize the force and stop me from moving it from that position on. He won't actually chase me. A lot of times you see people just moving their hands like this. Looks like when you're chasing hands. The, the whole point, when you do sticky hands, when you do sticky hands, and he does an attack, I'm covering my area. See how I'm covering my area right here? He does another attack. Another attack. Another attack. Another attack. See, I'm cover, I, the, the, whole, the purpose of sticky hands is Cover your area. Don't chase the cat. So, going back to the single stick hand, watch, I'll give you a little demonstration of the wrong way to block. If I go palm strike here, he blocks, okay? And he punches me. He's trying to punch towards my chest. And I'll, the next thing you know, I'm doing what? Trying to chase towards that area that he's trying to block at. Okay? What am I trying to do? In reality, when you actually block, you don't chase people's hands. I cover my area. This is the area I want to cover. Once he starts moving, he stays within my area. Once I go beyond my area, I'm basically chasing the point, which I don't want to do. Okay? So, let's do the basic attack, and we'll start from here. When I do palm, when I do my palm strike, make sure when you do basic palm, don't aim towards the chest. I mean, don't aim downwards. You know, that's true. A lot of times people know that you're supposed to aim at the chest, but they know they're going to get blocked, so what do they do? They end up, what? Aiming down right away. From here, what you want to do, I shoot towards the chest. When I feel the force start to guide down, I go with it first, okay? You don't, you don't want to end up looking like this, and then you pop, okay? Or you want to be like this, okay? When I, I aim for his chest, I feel the amount of pressure he has on there, he's starting to take me down, I go down with it. That's me going down with the force and maintaining the neutralization of that point. Now, most common mistake with bong style. When he punches upwards, what happens? Most people do this. Bring your elbow up and then block it like this. If he put a little more pressure and punch up, you'd actually see me shake back like this. <coughs> if you look at the <coughs> excuse me. If you look at the motion for bong style in the form, you're not going like this, elbow out and then bong. The most common thing is bong like this. You actually see the elbow driving in first and then out. So 
when I go palm strike here, what's, what's, what's the main thing? He starts to punch, I start going up. I cover my line. See how I cover my line? I go up to the center line, I don't go up to his punch. He's punching up. I'm not trying to cover his punch. As soon as I feel this line is exposed, what am I covering? I cover my own center line. He automatically runs into it. Otherwise, if I come like this, and he starts punching, I start chasing his punch up. That's me chasing his hand, hand in that position. I pop. I know that I know that basically this line is open. So what happens? When I feel him start to move, I cover my own center line. He starts pushing further, what happens? Then I convert to the bomb stop and neutralize the point. Okay? If you see yourself doing like this, boom. See how I'm rocking back and forth? What does that mean? That means go back, practice your stance because it sucks right now. All right, that's what it basically means. You gotta make sure you have a good stance before you can start going into single sticky hands. I know people want to do uh, single sticky hands right away, but you gotta practice the stance in order for everything to make it work. Okay? So from here, I go palm strike, he does jet. He does punch, I do simple bar to block. And at this point when you neutralize the force, you don't see us him pushing towards me or me pushing towards him. Everything stays neutral and quiet at this time. Nothing further is happening at this moment. As soon as he stops, I stop. If you feel it where he's punching like this, and then he keeps continuing to punch, he's learning the wrong technique then. He's got to know, as soon as I stop, he stops. If he keeps moving, he's doing a different technique. You got to, that means you ask a question, you answer it, and you respond equally with one another. You don't keep forcing the question through that. Okay. Now we're going to jump into common mistakes with the punch. A lot of times people have asked me, what happens if the person does a punch like this? Palm, palm, and punch, and he punches like this. Now how come I can't block his, uh, his punch with my bottom thumb? First of all, it's a drill. And second of all, you're developing the, the drill incorrectly. And third, the punch is long. If you, do, if you notice, if you jet like this and the punch ends up like this, you're punching like this. If I asked you to punch properly, you'd be punching like this. See how my elbow sunk and my shoulder sinks and the elbow pushes. If you do it incorrectly, you're punching like this after the jet. Okay? If, he, if that was the case, if I, if, I, if I actually punch like that, Robert wouldn't cover it with bar. He would just from here shoot out view to cover it. Okay? So, the most common mistake was though, after the jet, where if he found a jet, is make sure the elbow pushes towards the center and then you're actually having the right motion for the punch. You won't see this lift up motion when you're practicing it. Um, we're going to continue in, a, in the pinch. I'll do part two, giving more detail on this. Uh, but for now, practice the, the techniques that I've shown you and uh, hopefully uh, your cheetah will get better.